If you've watched the channel before, you know I'm a huge believer in the fact that calculating the intrinsic value of a stock is by far the best way to make investment decisions. So what I have done is I've made a complete stock valuation model in Google Sheets. On the spreadsheet, we have a stock screener. We have four different valuation models. We have Graham's valuation, a discounted cash flow model. We have a multiples valuation. And here we have a dividend discount model as well. And all four of these valuations will roll into our output tab. And the reason I created this spreadsheet is because it makes it extremely easy to calculate intrinsic value. Much of the process is completely automated. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you step by step on how to use this spreadsheet. So if you're a member of my Patreon, you can see exactly how I do this. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can go ahead and head over to my Patreon and download it there and start using this spreadsheet for your very own use. But let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and we'll show you exactly how this spreadsheet works. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we'll come up here and we're gonna plug in the stock ticker of the company we wanna analyze. And for this example, we're gonna be looking at Microsoft. So I'm just gonna plug in their stock ticker here and I hit enter and you can see all of this data is gonna automatically load in. We have business metrics over here. We have dividend data over here. We have moving averages. We have current price one year and two year return. And then we have a lot of different metrics that I typically like to look at right here. Something else we have is a one year chart, but that can easily be adjusted right here. Let's say we want to look at a 700 day chart. All we need to do is type in 700 and hit enter. And we can see this chart is going to automatically update. So this is our stock screener portion. And all four of these valuation models are linked to our stock screener. So if we jump over to Graham's valuation here, we can see we already have Microsoft listed as our stock right here. Same with our DCF model. Microsoft is listed multiple valuation Microsoft listed right here and our dividend discount model Microsoft is listed so let's go ahead and jump back over to our stock screener so obviously here is just we're gonna make some typical notes on the company you can look at anything you're interested at typically I like to look at dividends I like to look at moving averages I'm interested in the industry price targets, 52 week highs and lows. I like to look at institutional ownership. I'm usually gonna look at the beta as well and also the price to earnings. But let's go ahead and jump into how to perform these valuations. And the first valuation we're gonna look at is Graham's valuation. And this is a valuation model invented by Benjamin Graham himself. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And we can see the formula we use to calculate intrinsic value right here. And because much of the spreadsheet is already automated, we can see we already have some of the data filled in. Like I said, we have the stock listed here. We already have Microsoft's earnings per share listed, price to earnings of a company with no growth listed, and we have the average yield of a triple A corporate bond listed. So all that's left that we need to plug in is our growth rate projection and the current yield of triple A corporate bonds. So let's go ahead and start with our growth rate projections. Now, typically there's gonna be a lot that can go into a growth rate projection. You wanna look at industry expectations. You wanna look at analyst expectations. You also wanna do some of your own research to decide how you feel. But one of the things I typically like to look at is if we jump over to Yahoo Finance here, we're currently looking at Microsoft. And something you can quickly do at a glance is if we come over here and click on the analysis tab right here, which I'll click on. And once this page loads, what we can do is we can scroll down and we can see some growth rate projections from analysts. We can see over the next five years, analysts are projecting a growth rate from Microsoft of about 15.41%. So let's jump back over to our spreadsheet. So let's say that. We saw analysts projecting about a 15.4% growth rate. Let's say the industry is expected to grow at a rate of about 17%. And after some of our own research, we decide that 16% is a good growth rate. All we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in 16 right here. And now we only need one more variable to find our intrinsic value with Graham's valuation. And that is the current yield of AAA corporate bonds. So in order to do that, you can go to a website called YCharts right here. You can see, I'm not currently signed in, but you don't even have to account. You can quickly see the most recent um, US corporate A, triple A effective yield. And as of right now, it's actually dipped a little bit. It's sitting at 3.48%. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our spreadsheet here. And we will plug that in 3.48 and hit enter. And you can see our intrinsic value is automatically going to pull up. And according to Graham's valuation, Microsoft is currently worth $280 per share. Now, obviously, the reason that not all of this is automated is because we do want to be able to make a growth rate projection based on our own expectations. And the AAA corporate yield um, changes so often, and I typically like to look at different scenarios. So for example, it was as low as 2.8 this year. So a lot of the times I like to go ahead and plug in 2.8 just to see what it would be um, with that current yield on AAA corporate bonds. But let's go ahead and move it back. 
So that's going to allow you to play with it a little bit and see what the intrinsic value is based on a couple of different variables. So that's our first valuation. Let's go ahead and jump over and look at our discounted cash flow model. And this is one of the absolute most popular ways to value a company. Um, and for good reason, it's extremely effective. So typically what this, uh, essentially what this spreadsheet is going to do is it's going to value a company based on how much future free cash flow they are going to produce. So in order to perform a discounted cash flow, Analysis, we need to project a growth rate to the future free cash flows for the company. So the first thing we need to do is look at the historical free cash flow from Microsoft. So what we will do is if we jump over to a website called Macro Trends and plug in Microsoft, we can see they have a lot of data and one of the metrics that they do have is their yearly free cash flow. So if we scroll all the way down here, we can see we have their annual free cash flow data. So all we're gonna do is start plugging some of this in. So we can see in 2022, um, here's the free cash flow. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Um, we'll plug it in right here, six, five. Let's see what it was, one, four, nine. We'll jump back over here, 56, one, one, eight. And then we'll just go ahead and plug it in one more year just to keep things simple, four, five, two, three, four. Now, depending on how long the company has been operating and how large it is, you may want to get more years of data, but sometimes it's worth just doing, you know, four or five years. Since this is just an example, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in three years. But what it's going to do is it's going to show you the average growth rate year over year of all of the free cash flow that we've plugged in. So we can see average growth rate of this free cash flow that we have plugged in here of 20.08%. You also want to do more research again on like industry expectations, analyst expectations for free cash flow growth. And let's say after I've done that, that I decide a 17% growth rate for their free cash flow is um, pretty close to accurate. What you can see here is our future free cash flows are going to automatically plug in right here, as well as our terminal value, which is the sum of all the future free cash flow past the year 2030. We then get the present value of all of these future free cash flows listed right here. Something else that we do want to take note of is our discount rate. If you're interested how to calculate the discount rate, I do have a video on how to do that. I'll put a link to that in the description. But a lot of times, um, investors are going to typically apply a discount rate of 7, 8, or 9%, depending on the structure of the company and in this scenario I'm applying a discount rate of 9% for Microsoft. Now what we need to do is we need to plug in the company's cash and cash equivalents and plug in their total debt because um, you can see we already have the sum of the future free cash flow right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back over to micro or excuse me to Yahoo Finance. If we come right here and click on financials what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to select the balance sheet. You can see we're currently looking at the income statement. We'll come here and click on balance sheet. So if we scroll down, we want to find the cash and cash equivalent. So we'll click right here. That is an asset. So we'll click on total assets and then we're going to click on current assets. And right here we can see the cash and cash equivalents and it's listed right here. So 104757. So we'll come back over here and we'll plug that in. 104757 and hit enter. And now we need the total debt. So let's go back over to um, Yahoo Finance. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see total debts listed near the bottom of the balance sheet, 61270. So we'll jump back over to our spreadsheet and plug in 61270 and hit enter. And the last thing that we need for our discounted cash flow is the shares outstanding. Again, we can pull that from Yahoo Finance. So let's come back over here and if we scroll back up to the top, what we're going to do is we're going to click right here on statistics. So once you've clicked here, you're going to have a new and we'll scroll down here just a little bit and we can see we have shares outstanding listed right there. I believe it was 7.46 billion. So let's jump back over to our spreadsheet and we'll plug in 7460 and hit enter. And you can see right here, now we have our discounted cash flow price per share. So we can see according to this model, we come to an intrinsic value of $358 for Microsoft. We have two more valuations to go. Let's go ahead and look at our multiples valuation model. Now the multiples valuation is pretty simple and much of this process is completely automated. But the idea behind of it is we should be able to value a company um, using a price to earnings multiple and based off how the market is valuing companies are similar in structure to the company we're looking at. So for this example, we're looking at Microsoft. We're going to use a price to earnings multiple from similar companies to value them. So we'll come here, we'll plug in companies that are similar in their stock ticker. So let's say we want to look at Apple, we'll hit enter. We can see this data is going to load in. Let's say we want to look at another company. Let's say we want to look at Meta and we'll say we want to look at Adobe as well. 
and we'll go ahead and stick with that for now. So what this is doing is it's plugging in the company name, stock price, earnings per share, and price to earnings multiple. We then take the average price to earnings multiple for these companies and multiply it by Microsoft's earnings per share, which is automatically listed, to come to our intrinsic value of $256. So you can see this is a very quick and simple way to see if a company is overvalued or undervalued. Something else I typically like to look at is look at this average price to earnings of companies that are similar to Microsoft. Jump back over to the stock screener and we can look at the price to earnings here. So we can see Microsoft is trading at a slightly higher price to earnings multiple. When you're performing this valuation model, you do have to look into things and understand, you know, is it fair that they're trading at a higher price to earnings multiple? Um, you know, in this scenario, Meta has dropped by a large amount over the past year. So this uh, low price to earnings multiple is lowering this average price to earnings. So you do have to make sure that you take companies that are very similar in structure and kind of going through similar business cycles, or this will not provide a fair valuation. Now, one more valuation model to go and that's the dividend discount model and the idea behind this valuation model is we should be able to value a company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing so what we want to do is we want to plug in the quarterly dividend payouts over the past four or five years so again if we go over to Yahoo Finance we can find that data here so what we will do is if we scroll up here um, we can click right here on historical data and what we're going to be able to do when we pull up this historical data is we can look at the past five years of dividend payouts. So what we'll do is we come here to time period and we can select the last five years of data right there. And if we come right here, instead of historical prices, we want to look at dividends only and then click apply. And here we can see now we have all the dividend payouts. Now, again, there's other places you can pull up this information. Um, sometimes I like to use Seeking Alpha. I do have an affiliate code if you'd like to get 40% off of their subscription services. But we can see right here, um, so their last dividend payout was 0.62. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our spreadsheet and plug that in right here. And I'll just put 0.62 in. I'm just going to fill in the past few years. So we can see before that they were paying out about 0.56. And we'll jump back over to our spreadsheet. Before that it was 0.51 and 0.46. And then before that it looks like it was, we'll scroll down, 0.42. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. And once we've done that, we can see the rest of the more complicated process is completely done for us. Now we can see how much they paid out yearly in dividends, and we can see the growth rate year over year, and what the average growth rate of those year over year um, payouts was. And we can see it was sitting at about 10.23%. So this is a really solid dividend growth company. Again, now the two things we need is our growth rate projection and our discount rate. We already found our discount rate on our discounted cash flow model, so we're gonna stick with 9%. Now we need to apply a growth rate to this company. So typically when you apply a growth rate here, you have to remember this is applying it to the entire future for this company. So I've, it's not typically gonna be as high most of the time as the average growth rate over these past few years, unless it's a younger company. Um, and so you're gonna wanna do a little bit more research into the historical data for this company as well. Um, look at their management's commitment to increasing dividend payouts and things such as that. But once you've done that, um, you're gonna plug in your growth rate here. So let's say we wanna apply a growth rate of 8% for Microsoft and hit enter. We can see based off of that, our dividend discount model gives us an intrinsic value of $267 per share. Now we have all four of our valuation models done. But one thing we do wanna take note of is whenever we have a really high growth rate projected, we wanna jump back over to our stock screener and come over here and look at our dividend data and check the payout ratio. If it's a nice low payout ratio, then we know that this is a very safe dividend paying company. We have nothing to worry about. If it's a little bit higher, around 80 or 90%, that is a little bit of a red flag, meaning that dividend increase may be at risk in the future. But obviously in this scenario, that is not at all a risk. So we can go ahead and jump over to our output tab. And here on the output tab, we have all four of our valuation models. Graham's valuation, multiples valuation, discounted cash flow, and our dividend discount model. And all four of these valuation models will be averaged together right here to find our overall intrinsic value. 
And again, this is not really in-depth research. I'm just using some of this data as an example. This is not the actual intrinsic value for Microsoft, but you can see based on this example, we come to an intrinsic value of $290 per share. Now, right here, we have the current price listed at 274%. We can see the difference between those two numbers here, but as a value dividend investor, we always want to be applying a margin of safety. So right here, this is where you can plug in whatever margin of safety you feel comfortable with. So let's say, you know, you're a little bit more aggressive with your investments and you only apply a 10% margin of safety. You can see based off of this, our acceptable buy price for this company is $261 per share. And then our spreadsheet is going to be telling us if it's a buy or not. So if you're more conservative, maybe you apply a 30% margin of safety. Based off of that, your acceptable buy price is $203 per share. So the spreadsheet is telling us this is not a stock we should be buying. So there you have it. That is how you use the complete stock valuation spreadsheet. That was a very beginner level um, analysis, but you can see how simple this spreadsheet can make valuing a company and just how efficient it is. Again, much of the process is completely automated. So let's say we wanted to look at a company like Apple. We plug it in here and hit enter. All of this data will load in and all we would have to do is go back and plug in those variables to come to our intrinsic value. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.